Learning medicine is hard work. Osmosis makes it easy. It takes your lectures and notes to create a personalized study plan with exclusive videos, practice questions, and flashcards, and so much more. Try it free today. Chronic kidney disease is a broad term that includes subtle decreases in kidney function that develop over a minimum of three months. In contrast, acute kidney injury refers to any decrease in kidney function that happens in less than three months. Now, the kidney's job is to regulate what's in the blood, so they might remove waste or make sure electrolyte levels are steady or regulate the overall amount of water. And they even make hormones. The bottom line is that the kidneys do a ton of stuff. Blood gets into the kidney through the renal artery, and once inside, it goes to tiny clumps of arterioles called glomeruli, where it's initially filtered. And the filtrate, which is the stuff that gets filtered out, moves into the renal tubule. The rate at which this filtration process takes place is known as the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. In a normal, healthy person, this is somewhere around 100 to 120 milliliters of fluid filtered per minute per 1.73 meters squared of body surface area. This value is slightly less in women than men, and it decreases slowly in all of us as we grow older. One of the most common causes of chronic kidney disease is hypertension. In hypertension, the walls of arteries supplying the kidney start to thicken in order to withstand the pressure, and that results in a narrow lumen. A narrow lumen means less blood and oxygen gets delivered to the kidney, which leads to ischemic injury to the nephron's glomerulus. Immune cells like macrophages and fat-laden macrophages, called foam cells, slip into the damaged glomerulus and start secreting growth factors like transforming growth factor beta-1, or TGF-beta-1. These growth factors cause the mesangial cells to regress back to their more immature stem cell state known as mesangioblasts. And then those mesangioblasts secrete extracellular structural matrix. This excessive extracellular matrix leads to glomerulosclerosis, which is hardening and scarring, which diminishes the nephron's ability to filter the blood. And over time, this leads to chronic kidney disease. The most common cause of chronic kidney disease is diabetes. In this situation, excess glucose in the blood starts sticking to proteins a process called non-enzymatic glycation because no enzymes are involved. This process of glycation particularly affects the efferent arteriole and causes it to get stiff and more narrow, a process called highline arteriosclerosis. This creates an obstruction that makes it difficult for blood to leave the glomerulus and increases pressure within the glomerulus which leads to hyperfiltration, essentially pushing more fluid through. In response to this high-pressure state, the supportive mesangial cells secrete more and more structural matrix, which expands the size of the glomerulus. Over many years, this process of glomerulosclerosis once again diminishes the nephron's ability to filter the blood and can lead to chronic kidney disease. Although diabetes and hypertension are responsible for the vast majority of chronic kidney disease cases, there are other causes as well, including systemic diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, which can also cause glomerulosclerosis. Other causes, though, include infections like HIV, as well as long-term use of medications like NSAIDs, and toxins like the ones in tobacco. Now, normally, urea in the blood gets excreted in the urine. But when there's a decreased glomerular filtration rate, less urea gets filtered out, and therefore it has nowhere else to go besides the blood, and so it builds up in the blood, which is a condition called azotemia. Azotemia can cause general symptoms like nausea and loss of appetite. But as urea levels really build up, they can affect the functioning of the central nervous system, causing encephalopathy. This results in asterixis, a tremor of the hand that kind of resembles a bird flapping its wings, and is best seen when a person attempts to extend their wrists. Further accumulation can even progress to coma and death. This buildup can also cause pericarditis, which is inflammation of the lining of the heart. In addition, there can also be increased tendency for bleeding, since excess urea in the blood makes platelets less likely to stick to each other, and so there's less clot formation. Finally, in some cases, someone can develop uremic frost, 
where urea crystals can deposit in the skin and they look like powdery snowflakes. In addition to getting rid of waste, the kidneys played an important role in electrolyte balance. Potassium levels are particularly important, and normally the kidney helps with potassium excretion. In chronic kidney disease though, just like with urea, less potassium is excreted, and so more builds up in the blood, and this leads to hyperkalemia, which can be problematic because it can cause cardiac arrhythmias. Another key role of the kidneys relates to balancing calcium levels. Normally, the kidney helps to activate vitamin D, which then helps to increase absorption of calcium from the diet. With chronic kidney disease, though, there's less activated vitamin D, so less calcium is absorbed into the blood, which results in hypocalcemia, low calcium levels. As calcium levels in the blood fall, parathyroid hormone is released, which causes the bones to lose calcium. Over time, this resorption of calcium from the bones leaves them weak and brittle, a condition known as renal osteodystrophy. The kidneys also release key hormones. For example, normally when the kidneys start sensing a lower than normal amount of fluid getting filtered, they respond by releasing the hormone renin to increase the blood pressure. In chronic kidney disease, the falling glomerular filtration rate leads to more and more renin secretion, which leads to hypertension. Now, remember that hypertension is a cause of chronic kidney disease itself, so this creates quite the vicious cycle. Finally, the kidney also secretes the hormone erythropoietin, which stimulates the production of red blood cells from the bone marrow. In chronic kidney disease, erythropoietin levels fall, and this leads to lowered production of red blood cells, and ultimately anemia. The diagnosis of chronic kidney disease comes down to looking at changes in the glomerular filtration rate over time. Chronic kidney disease might be suspected with a GFR of less than 90 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters squared. Irreversible kidney damage might happen with a GFR below 60 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters squared. To confirm the diagnosis, a kidney biopsy can be done to look for changes like glomerulosclerosis. Treatment for chronic kidney disease often involves managing the underlying cause. In severe situations, dialysis or a kidney transplant might be needed. Alright, as a quick recap. Chronic kidney disease is when the glomerular filtration rate falls below 90 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters squared over at least 3 months. Chronic kidney disease is mainly caused by diabetes and hypertension and complications include electrolyte abnormalities, toxin buildup, hypertension, and weak bones. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a deeper dive on this topic, take a look at osmosis.org where we have flashcards, questions, and other awesome tools to help you learn medicine. Otherwise, you can always support us by donating on Patreon, subscribing to our channel, or following us on social media.